to the Pine Bush Library. We are going to speak with Brianna Giganti, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, got it. and Senior Investigator Jan Golding. Yep. They're going to discuss uh, scams and frauds. Yes. <clears throat> and we thank them very much and take it away. Perfect, thank you. Okay. All right, so um, my name is Jan Golding. I work for the State Police. I've been doing this for about 30 years. I live here in Pine Bush, um, so I'm local. Um, but we've had a lot of scams and frauds, especially targeting people of your generation. Like, it's been very bad. It's lots of money uh, being stolen. Um, this is your hard-earned money. You should keep it and not give it to anybody. So uh, with that being said, <clears throat> don't get scammed. So we're going to talk about identity theft first. Identity theft is basically <coughs> someone that gets your personal identifying information. So that could be... Oh. I can see. Can you see this? Sure. Um, social security number, your phone number, all of these things people can use to create accounts in your name without you even knowing. So then you have to ask <coughs> yourself, I mean, how would they get this information? Because you're certainly not, hopefully you're not telling anybody this information. A couple different ways. This is old school. People really don't get your information this much anymore. This is trash picking and, and going through your garbage. It still happens. Um, uh, but we generally we're seeing your identity is being stolen from banks. Your credit card companies. <clears throat> It's not being stolen. People aren't skimming your credit card when you go out to dinner. What happens is large banks like, say, Citibank or um, oh, Walden Savings Bank, they have a breach. Somebody hacks into their computer system, and they're not just taking one person's information. They're taking lots of people. <coughs> so they'll get 1,000, 2,000 um, people at a time, and then what they'll do is they'll sell that stuff on the internet, on what they call the dark web, something that none of us have probably ever gone to, but you can get there, um, and all of this stuff is for sale. Um, they'll sell it in batches um, for pennies on the dollar. And somebody can use all of your information to just go start opening up accounts and swiping away. <coughs> so, does anybody here ever check their credit? Or you do? Yeah. Okay, good. Do you look at your credit card statements every month? Yes. Yeah. You, you watch your credit card statements every month. Um, checking your credit rating, I wouldn't recommend, but you can do things like TransUnion and Equifax. Um, or you can even buy protection to protect your identity. LifeLock, it's, ex oh, it's expensive. I've never, I don't know, but look into it, please. I have Experian. I, check my data. I have a credit lock on it, so it locks it. So if anybody decides to like run my credit, like we just recently did like a home equity loan, my credit account is locked unless I unlock it myself. So nobody can run my stuff unless I happen to unlock it. So people also get your information things like this. Who here is on Facebook? Because if you, <laughs> you have to be, right? Because you have grandkids and children, and the only way to keep up is on Facebook. So I have it too. It's awful. But what you need to do <laughs> is, what I would recommend is going to the settings and only let your friends see your information. Okay? And if you don't know how to do that, maybe we'll go on Facebook and log in before we leave here today. It's very simple. You go up to the top button, you, you scroll down, you click that. Do not ever make your profile public, ever, okay? And then lie about your information, too. My right age isn't on there. And oh, well, that's smart. Okay. That. Right. Yeah. But most people, when we signed up for these Facebook accounts, like I think I signed up in like 2007 or 8, maybe. I think I was one of my last friends that I was getting yelled at. You're not on Facebook. <laughs> I put everything in there, everything about myself. Everybody well, does. Everybody does. Can, can you my name's not my right name. Can you undo it in some way? Yes, you can. This is the other way they get your information. Mm -hmm. Unsolicited phone calls to your home or your cell phone. Nobody should be calling you and asking you for your information, ever. There's no reason. The bank doesn't do it, the credit card company doesn't do it, the mortgage company doesn't do it. Um, but the only person you're probably gonna give your most um, private information to might be your doctor's office, but that's generally you calling them. So if the phone call is coming towards you, it's, there's something wrong. They, nobody should ever be calling me. All right. So, shred personal stuff, be male conscious. Um, if you get things in the mail that don't look right, somebody's trying to solicit you for whether it's an investment, um, 
signing up for this credit card or bank account, toss it right in the trash. Okay. When you need a new credit card, you're going to go out and get it yourself, right? If they're trying to sell it to you, no, not good. Um, if you didn't initiate the call, don't give any personal information. Now, that doesn't mean you can't call your bank and say, hey, there's a problem with my account, and they're going to say, okay, Mrs. Damon, what's, what's the last four of your social security number? But you initiated the call, and that's okay. Just make sure you're calling the right number. Um, <clears throat> They'll send you emails asking for personal information or asking to click links. Don't click anything, ever, because that will send you into a wormhole that you don't want to uh, go down. Lottery stuff. If you didn't play, you can't win. Can I ask a question yeah. now? Wait, no, 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 ask now. Talking about Facebook and emails. A week ago, I got an email from a gentleman I know in Florida. It wasn't his email name, it was his full first and last name okay and I said that's unusual because he has an email and stupid me I clicked on it and then it said I have to show you this link and I said a few choice curse words and I deleted <laughs> it yeah but what does one do if you see if you go on the email without pressing the link you're fine okay if you just you. open the email you're you're fine Jen. That you generally have to click that extra link to get you into that, into the bad stuff. Okay, just the email itself is not going to harm. You. Um, and again, the lottery stuff, you're going to, you might get a lot of this stuff in mail saying that you won the lottery, but you have to pay the taxes up front. It's, it's nonsense. You get calls from publishers, clearinghouse as well. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so let's we'll just talk about identity real quick. Again. Um, try to only have one credit card if possible. Okay, the more credit cards you have, the more chances you have of having your identity stolen. And like I said, it's all coming from the banks. It's not being swiped at, when you go eat at Cosimo's or when you're, when you're in, at Hannaford. It's, that's not where it's coming from. Occasionally, occasionally we'll get skimmers on gas pumps we've noticed lately. Um, ATM machines, be very careful. If it looks like it's not part of the machine, tell them. What they'll do is they'll put plastic covers mm -hmm. over the the, the, the slot where you slide your card in, and then they put a little camera up top so they, they skim the card, they can see the numbers you're punching in. So be wary of ATM machines. We have had it happen in this area. Walden Savings got hit. Um, we had gas pumps in Slate Hill get hit. So, um, so just be careful. All right, so. This is what we're seeing lately as far as scams go, the bail scams. Mm -hmm. Pop-ups on your computer telling you it's infected with child pornography. Um, do not click those links. Romance scams, we're, these, these are the ones that really will take you. Um, and generally we see this in uh, widows and widowers, uh, people who get, they're lonely and they'll be, um, somebody will befriend them, um, whether it's online or through a phone call. And sometimes those, those scams can go on for a year to a point where you're very, We've found people who are in, in love, and they're really talking to somebody sitting in a basement in Nigeria. Like, like it's it's not real. Um, <clears throat> if you get this in the mail, somebody sends you something, or even an email, says, I'm gonna send you this check. I need you to cash it for me, keep a little bit for your, for your troubles, and then head down to Walgreens and buy a whole bunch of gift cards and mail it to me. Don't do it. Or wire me the money, don't. Um, you could actually be on the hook for that. That's, 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 that's money now. The investment opportunities, stay away from them. If you want to go invest your own money, go to your own bank. Um, and do it. Lottery email compromise. That's a big one. You get an email from your daughter, or you think is your daughter, but the last name is off by just a little bit. Maybe one letter is wrong, um, and now you start corresponding with her. She says, hey, Ma, can I borrow 50 bucks? I got to cover this bill this month. Next thing you know, it's out, it's fireworks out, so stay away from that. Um, and home improvement driveway ceiling scams, that's the time of year. So when the guy's doing the, he's doing the driveways down your street, and he comes up to your door and says, hey, I got some left over. It, he's gonna, he may do it, but it's gonna be about that thin, and he's gonna charge you about 10 grand for it, so don't do it. Home improvement scams, these are big. And we are several contractors in this area who we are, we have arrested, and there's a couple on the hook to be arrested soon for it. Basically, you call, I needed my deck replaced. Um, I, need, I need my 
roof fixed. Okay, I need 3000 up front for the materials. You don't sign a contract with them, and you never see your $3,000 again, and your roof is still leaking. So um, always obtain more than one bid, ask friends for recommendations, um, insist the contract's in writing, don't pay anything before you read and sign the contract. We generally recommend only give one third up front. And some contractors do need your money to go buy your materials. That's, that's, not, that's not uncommon. Um, better contractors, though, don't need your money up front. A good contractor who's doing very good business has plenty of cash, and he should not need yours to start your job. <clears throat> um, what else? Yeah, and the contractor, find him where he lives. So when he, when he screws you guys, I can go find him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was when, <laughs> not if. We have a contractor who just took a woman in Middletown for was five thousand dollars. He lives in Pennsylvania, which means it's a pain in the butt for me to now try to arrest him out of state. Um, and she's out her money, and she's her, she still doesn't have a debt. Uh, you can check certain websites um, for contractors to see if their complaints registered against them. Which is a which one's that? Angie's list. Angie's list, yeah. Um, so. And never make a final payment until the job's done. So. <clears throat> yeah. well, didn't come I got this the other day. Mail scam. It's Milton Helmet and Partners LLP, based in Ottawa, Canada. Dear John Golden, that's my father. He's dead. <laughs> My name is Edward Milton. I'm a partner at Milton Homer and Partners LLP in Nottingham, United Kingdom. Apologies if this letter came to you as a surprise, since there has been no obvious correspondence between us. Anyway, it's an unclaimed life insurance policy from a person named Marcus Golding in New Great Britain. I don't have any relatives in Great Britain. <laughs> but he wants to go in on the life insurance policy as a, a partnership with me. Oh, that's great. So we have to pay 10% up front for the taxes and then we're going to split the remaining 90%. So. Sounds great. A lot of money. Uh, $11 million. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right, the romance games. <clears throat> we talked about this. This is really crushing people. And Pete, we'll, we'll get these investigations, and we'll, we'll prove that the person they're talking to is out of, out of the country. It, certain things you... I mean, if you're talking to anybody on the phone, if they say they're from the United Kingdom, but they sound like they're, they're Indian, you know, or they're Pakistani or something like that, it's, use your, your better judgment. But you really should not develop relationships with people online, on the phone. Um, I mean, I know pen pals used to be a big thing, that's great, but generally a pen pal wasn't going to ask you for cash. Um, or a date. <laughs> so this is how people find you. <clears throat> on the latest and greatest, and Tinder, and all these dating sites. Um, and it's not just young people on Tinder. There are elderly people on Tinder, lots of them. Um, and you, what, you have to swipe right or left to, yeah. swipe, swipe, left, swipe or right. left or right, whether or not you want them. And there's people on Tinder who are out for your, for your money, and your, it's another way Pete, the romance um, <clears throat> scams begin. Joanne Israel from Long Island. She is survived by her loving husband of 52 years, Robert. Now Robert's going to get a phone call. Robert will get an email. Robert will get called because they were married for 52 years. Away. Yes, and now he's and now he's lonely. So and obituaries are public. Anybody can anybody can see them. So this is we actually believe it or not we use obituaries all the time during investigations to find out whose family members with who. Um, do they know these people? You know, it's, there's a lot of information goes into obituaries. <laughs> that was two thousand two hundred million dollars in two thousand nineteen for romance games. Um, so never send anybody gifts that you've not met in person. If you haven't actually held hands with this person and gone on a date, don't give them. Um, take it slow, ask questions, and this is the big one: <clears throat> people who promise to visit and never do. I had a woman who. Uh, met a guy, a guy who she thought was in England. Um, they talked for two years, and every month he would promise to come and visit. I'm coming, don't worry, I'm coming. I just got to get some money together for airfare. And then, she, of course, she says, I'll pay for your airfare. So she sends him money. 
oh, I got sick, I lost my job, I can't come, and she, oh, I, I lost my job, so now you have to pay my rent. Um, and she, this woman was out thousands and thousands of dollars. So, so. Very convincing. Oh, it's hard to believe in this world. Uh, the grandma and grandpa scams. Of course, mm -hmm. the people actually do it. We, just had, we had one in Pine Ridge yesterday. <clears throat> And and somebody who you, you all probably know um, who was almost almost victimized, but they're re they're related to a trooper, and they made a phone call first and said, "Is this legit?" My mother-in-law fell for that to the tune of close to five thousand yeah. yeah. dollars. So. Um, and it's very grandchild calls, um, tells the victim he or she desperately needs to to borrow money. Grandchild begs. Not to tell his parents, um, things to get out of jail. So, That's the one. so for instance, let's see here. Sandy Damon gets a phone call from Jennifer and John Riccardi in Virginia. Did you two check me out? <laughs> well, you're on Facebook. I am. <laughs> well, John's been in an accident, and now he's under arrest. The Virginia State Police say you got to mail five thousand dollars worth of bail. And he's afraid to tell Jennifer because she'll be pissed. Right? <clears throat> so he calls you. Mom, mom in law. Mm -hmm. And there you go. And that's that's exactly how it happens. And that's what happened to my mother in law. My son was a DJ and traveled all over. And he was in the Dominican Republic. And somebody called my mother in law and said, Grandma, I'm in jail because I lost my passport or whatever. And uh, need fifteen hundred dollars immediately, so she ran down to Western Union and sent fifteen hundred dollars immediately. Came back, she got another phone call, and I said to her, "Why didn't you call me?" Yeah. This is what you have to do if you ever get a phone call from somebody saying they're a relative that they're in jail. Listen, relatives will call you sometimes. It happens. Um, we don't all have the best relatives, and somebody may get themselves locked up, and they may call you looking for bail. Call your local police department first. Say, okay, give me a number, I'll call you back. Call your local police department or state police, call Crawford or Shondam or us, and and may ask them, can you check this out? Can you call this person? As soon as the police call that person, it's over. So it'll stop. So never ever fall for this police. And we like I said yesterday, somebody here in Pine Ridge, this close to to falling for it. Um, we had somebody at Woman Grove on Monday. Um, so Lottery and sweepstakes frauds. Uh, we talked about this a little bit. Um, you're never going to win anything you didn't actually sign up for. So, I mean, I think it's actually, <coughs> I think it's actually illegal. To play a lottery outside of this country. I don't think we're allowed to. Oh. Yeah, and... No lottery charges fees up front. We all know how it works. All right, computer pop-ups. This, these are scary. We've all, I've had them. Um, <clears throat> you get a pop-up, virus detected, and then it asks you to click this link, and then it brings you into this this awful. Okay, you have to pay us this much. We'll unlock your computer. If you get a pop-up like that. Turn your computer off. Just hit the power button. Wait a little bit. Power it back on. If it's still there, it's a trip to the Geek Squad or Best Buy to go get it removed. If you're not if if it's stuck there, you're none of us have the computer skills to get rid of it. So um, get, buy virus protection for your computers. Well, you know through. Uh, Norton Nor and Nor McAfee. Yeah. So, that these can happen and they can be, but they're not. They're not real. <clears throat> the email scams, the email address is the biggest thing to look for. Um, if you think you get something like this, that this is something, something that says you're having trouble verifying your Office 365 account, Microsoft or Outlook, they won't, they won't send you the stuff. That's this, these are coming from other people. And look for spelling errors, like the posture or the commas over here. A lot of these foreign people don't know how to read and spell English, and they spell it wrong. So read the entire thing. But generally, 
is what it comes down to. If somebody's sending you a message, whether it be a, a phone call, an email, a text message, if something's wrong, it's it's fake. It's not real. All right, elder abuse. This is people trying to take your hard-earned life savings, your money that you've worked and lived your entire life to try to, to accumulate. Um, we see it around here mostly is caregivers. So you have a visiting nurse, a home health aide, um, and you say you can't drive anymore. And you give them your credit card to go to Hanford. Or you give them your car keys and a gas card. I'm not saying you can't do that. You have to monitor what they're spending and buying. And usually what happens is the caregiver will take your credit card, <clears throat> go to Hannaford and buy your $60 worth of stuff, and then buy $40 of themselves. And that can go on for years. And, and at the end of that, it costs thousands and thousands. Um, what we also see is um, caregivers or with people being cared for develop relationships with the caregivers. To the, to the like where they start to feel like they owe them more than what the charges are every month. You know, they, it's almost kind of like a Stockholm syndrome. It's like like you really start to um, bond with that person. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you have your own living children who, at some point, are going to get your estate. But in the meantime, you're handing it off to somebody who's not a family member. Um, we just had a case of this in Walton, and. I can almost see how it's maybe you know you you, just, you develop a relationship. This person is caring for you. They're, they're doing everything for you, and um, but <clears throat> you have to keep an eye on that. Or if you can't keep an eye on it because you're to a point in your life where you no longer have that ability, your children should. You know, some uh, some some relatives should. Go. But <clears throat> so it's always it's persons of trust, and it can be family members um, and other types of caregivers. Two thirds of all elder abuse, perpetrators of family members serving in a caregiving role. Um, so, and we get these reports from, let's say, mom is older now, she needs to be cared for, she has three kids, and but the one kid who doesn't have a job, he takes care of mom and then basically cleans mom out with the, without the other children knowing. stuff we see. <clears throat> Cashing their checks, using their lines of credit, changing deeds, you know, wills, things like that. All right, so let's just say you're, you're a victim. It happens. Call your bank if it's, if it's like your credit card or if somebody gets access to your bank account somehow, you call your bank first. Place a fraud alert on your credit report. Review your credit reports. There's, there's an annual credit report.com is a website for it. Close the accounts and then call the police. And, that, and actually, honestly, call the police should be first. That, that really should be right up there on top of the list. Um, most of the time, if it's a credit card or a debit card that gets compromised, um, <clears throat> the bank will cover your losses. However, if let's just say Somebody sends you a check in the mail to cash, and then you go down to, to Walgreens and buy a fistful of gift cards and mail them to this person. Um, you may be out that money because you are now part of it. The bank is not going to cover your loss because you actually did something to lose that money. So that's where you have to be really careful. They'll, they'll cover the credit cards and the debit cards. but um, And any unauthorized withdrawals from your bank. Uh, we're seeing now we have... A group of, of people have been hitting the Hudson Valley with fake passports. <clears throat> they'll walk into Walden Savings Bank and they'll have somebody's account information that they bought off the dark web. They'll go in, write out a withdrawal slip, bank gives them money. You'll be covered for that because the bank made the mistake. The bank gave the money to somebody who shouldn't have it. They physically made that mistake. But if you pull money out of your bank and you hand it to somebody, no, that's, that's, that's a loss. So, 
point. So do not send somebody you do not know. You don't have to pay the money to win the sweepstakes. Uh, and you can, yes, believe it or not, if you do that check scam, you can be locked up. Because you're part of the, even though you're unwitting sometimes, but come on. Somebody sends you a check and they say, send me back the money. That's, um, don't purchase gift cards. Unless it's Christmas or Hanukkah or Easter, don't buy gift cards ever. There's no, there's no need for them. You have a credit card, you have a bank card, um, gift cards are for gifts, not for sending people money. Um, and this is the other one too. The IRS, utility companies, law enforcement will never call you on the phone demanding money. Ever. Never, never, never. It doesn't happen. Um, the IRS, if they want your money, they send you a certified letter. Um, and then you have to call the IRS. Uh, law enforcement will never, ever call asking for money. Except, and be careful of this, some law enforcement unions um, do call. For instance, Crawford sends out a mailer every yeah. every year. They send out a, you know, donate to the, to the town of Crawford PBA. That's legit. But the actual police department itself will never ever call asking for money. Um, nor do utility companies. They just send you warning notices and then they shut off your electricity. So, um, yeah, jury.